No matter what you do in life, no matter how good you are, how much you care about not hurting others, or how hard you work, understand that there will always be people against you. We have all encountered someone like this, be it a colleague with abusive attitudes, in college, friends, or even within our own family. By adopting the practical philosophy of Stoicism, you learn to deal with these people who envy the brilliance of others without having to resort to fighting or arguing. With intelligence and wisdom, Stoicism is seen as one of the most practical and profound schools of thought, teaching us to focus our energy and strength on things we can control while learning to accept those that are beyond our reach. If you don't learn to position yourself in life, you end up being stepped on by others, including those who dislike you. So, being stoic doesn't mean being passive or silently harboring resentment, but rather having a firm stance and having control over what you feel, thinking before acting. Remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from the channel, Motinvesting Stoicism. Remember, your most significant victory doesn't lie in external battles, but in internal battles. 1. Know your adversary. Getting into your opponent's mind is the key to the first stoic tactic. In intense situations, it's tempting to act quickly, but proper understanding requires you to set aside prejudice and look beyond the surface. As Epictetus reminds us, it's not events themselves that disturb us, but our views about them. Ask sincere questions to uncover what motivates your adversary instead of inventing arguments against them. Focus on discovering the why behind their statements and behavior. What drives them? What concerns them? What do they desire? What life events have shaped their views? Examine through their lenses. Try to put yourself in their shoes to understand their perspective, not to endorse their behavior. How might they perceive the circumstances? What principles and convictions motivate them? Your goal is to understand what influences your opponent's actions. By practicing this approach, you not only disarm the situation but also equip yourself with a valuable skill for future interactions. Systemic empathy and understanding become powerful tools for building healthier relationships and pushing away toxic ones. Remember, constant practice of this technique enhances your ability to connect with others on a deeper level, promoting clearer communication. So, whenever you encounter conflict, Remember to know your adversary, seeking to truly understand their motivations and concerns. This will not only give you more control over the situation, but also strengthen your own interpersonal skills. 2. Silence is the best response. Disagreements abound in life, from political debates to parking lot disagreements. However, as Stoics teach us, not every stumbling block requires our attention. Engaging in every dispute, no matter how trivial, can emotionally drain us. Therefore, the second stoic tactic encourages us to choose our battles wisely. Imagine yourself watching a vast battlefield. Each discussion and discord has the potential to become a conflict. A prudent stoic would pause, carefully assessing each terrain before diving into the fight. Is the battle worth it? Will this skirmish affect my health or things essential to me? Assess whether the situation truly deserves your time and energy. Ask yourself if this matter will be important in a week, a month, or a year. Often, we realize we are investing effort in things that will soon be forgotten. Silence can be beneficial. Recognize the power of letting go. The best choice is to remain silent. According to Marcus Aurelius, it is enough to restrain the tongue and let things pass. Simply ignoring petty offenses or deciding not to engage in pointless arguments can be an incredibly self-controlled way to maintain your inner peace. The ability to distance yourself from insignificant conflicts does not imply weakness or indifference. It's about recognizing how valuable your time and energy are. By applying this stoic knowledge, 
You can navigate the battlefield of life with greater focus and save your energies for the moments that truly matter. Let's take a practical example. Suppose you are in an argument about a controversial topic on social media. Before responding impulsively, ask yourself, will this response change the other person's opinion or will it only increase my frustration? Often, the answer will be no. In that case, it is wiser to save your energy for situations where you can actually make a difference. Another example might be in the work environment. If a colleague is constantly trying to provoke an argument about a topic you find irrelevant, assess whether it's worth getting into that fight. Often, it's more effective to focus on your own tasks and let the provocations dissipate on their own. Remember, strategically choosing your battles is a sign of emotional intelligence and self-awareness. It's about focusing on the things that truly matter and letting go of what is trivial. This not only preserves your inner peace but also strengthens your emotional resilience. So, the next time you find yourself in a conflict, pause, assess the situation, and decide if this is a battle worth fighting. 3. Intentionally ignore. There is no show without an audience. Being ignored can be one of the worst feelings, so use that to your advantage. If possible, start intentionally ignoring those who declare themselves your enemy or dislike you. This strategy, while simple, requires a lot of self-control, because you consciously choose to no longer pay attention to provocations, malicious jokes, or even the person's presence. Understand that the power of some people lies precisely in causing emotional turmoil within us. Some people find satisfaction in provoking, and when you start to ignore them, you automatically negate that power, sending a clear message that they have no influence over your emotions or decisions. In this way, attempts to affect you are nothing more than attempts. Be a person committed to your moral movement and don't get into the fight. When you start ignoring, your mind becomes free to focus on what really matters. You create a mental and emotional space to appreciate every moment of your life, to work on your goals and truly focus on what you have control over, instead of having your energy sucked away by negative distractions or getting consumed for hours thinking about the responses you could have given, how you could have retaliated, or morally degraded that person. You start using that space and time for what is truly important to you. The strength of those who provoke or try to harm you lies precisely in the degree of influence and importance they have in your life, and only you can decide the degree that each occupies. You can decide not to feel harmed, and instead of giving in to provocations, choose not to be contaminated. This decision also protects us from the harmful effects of resentment, anger, and allows us to cultivate resilience and a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. This doesn't mean denying or pretending that conflicts exist, but rather that you have chosen not to be stuck in an unpleasant situation that another person has created. Following this path, we become architects of our happiness and guardians of our inner peace. 4. Transform adversaries into teachers. One of the concepts of Stoic philosophy is transforming adversity into a path, meaning instead of just facing your adversaries or enemies with hostility, you begin to see them as opportunities to grow and learn, truly as teachers on life's journey. Because they test our limits, expose our weaknesses, reveal our vices, show us clearly where we need to improve. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, who was the most powerful man in the world as Roman emperor, the best revenge is to not be like the one who wrongs us. Instead of reacting with anger, use these challenges to strengthen your resilience, wisdom, and virtues. When you are met with rudeness when being rude, you also become ill-mannered. If you are disrespected by doing the same, you also become someone who has no respect for others. Train your patience, your tolerance, and above all, your calm. In this way, the obstacle becomes the path. Moreover, Marcus Aurelius also advises us, when we encounter the temptation to criticize someone, stop and reflect on our own faults first, and ask ourselves, 
What flaw do I have that most resembles the one I am about to criticize? Sometimes, we demand from others what we ourselves cannot do. Thinking this way provides humility and empathy, also helps us to understand and appreciate the lessons that our adversaries can teach us, instead of feeding negative feelings or seeking revenge against our enemies. Be grateful for the opportunities for growth you wouldn't otherwise have. 5. Recognize your enemy is not the source of your suffering. The true reason for your suffering does not come from who you consider your adversary or enemy, or the person you are having problems with, but rather from the way you judge and face each situation that happens in your life. It's not the actions of that person that make you angry or hurt, it's the way you see and react that determines how you feel, really. This person, whoever it may be, helps you see what's going on inside you, shows you where you are thinking wrongly or reacting emotionally without need. Your enemy gives you the chance to see where you are placing too many expectations or clinging too much to what you shouldn't. Epictetus, who went from being a slave to an admired Stoic teacher, taught something very simple but powerful. It's not things that happen to us that upset us, but the judgments we make about them. He challenges the idea that external events have the power to disrupt our inner peace. Instead, it is the way we interpret these events that shapes our emotional response. For Epictetus, even when something bad happens, what really matters is how we face it. This helps us recognize that our perceptions and interpretations play a fundamental role in our emotional states. Epictetus believed that we have the power to choose how we react to things, and this choice can make all the difference. When you realize that what bothers you is not the person or situation itself, but what you think about it, you can change how you react and develop more emotional strength without being swayed by provocations. Moreover, this requires a profound change of perspective, ceasing to blame the external world and taking responsibility for our interpretations and emotional responses. Instead of blaming others or harboring resentment, we can begin to ask ourselves, why did this offend me so much? Why did so and so saying this make me so angry or upset? Why did that person's actions hurt me in this way? Think of your enemy as a mirror that reflects parts of you that may need attention. Examine how you feel and why you felt that way. 6. Choose to be great in forgiving. Forgiving is an act of greatness. It's like trading resentment and desires for revenge to find peace within yourself. Forgiving someone doesn't mean you have to walk alongside the person who wronged you or invite them to stay at your house, but rather that you choose to free yourself from all anger. Forgiveness is not about who wronged you, it's about you, not locking up bad feelings inside your chest. This is not a sign of weakness, but of strength and nobility. By forgiving, you show that you control your emotions and create your own destiny. It's an elevation of consciousness that involves accepting the reality of what happened, whether you understand the reasons behind it or not. It's not easy to demonstrate this greatness and act like this, so let me share this story with you about a very rich man who decided to give a poor man a gift on his birthday. Ironically, he had a tray full of garbage and dirt prepared, but to truly humiliate the man, the rich man delivered the gift in the presence of all his friends and subordinates. The birthday boy, in his naivete, received the gift with great joy and politely thanked him, and asked the man to wait a few minutes because he would like to return the kindness. So the poor man threw away all the trash, washed and disinfected the tray, filled it with beautiful flowers, and returned it to the rich man with a card saying, We give what we have best. This story shows that you can't expect people to give what they don't have. Each of us has a baggage of feelings and attitudes. Some can only offer a tray full of garbage, while others choose flowers. Choosing love over anger not only benefits the other person, but also helps us grow, expanding our vision and moral strength. In the story, the rich man tried to spread hatred and negativity, but his actions did not shake the poor man, who responded with love and kindness. In the same way, 
we too can transcend our primal instincts and choose to act with love and kindness. By doing this, you rise above petty fights and disputes, and show that you are not only part of the problem, but also an essential part of the solution. When you forgive, you break a cycle of resentment and restore balance to your emotional and mental life. When we let ourselves be carried away by pride, we close ourselves off to the world and create barriers that make any kind of reconciliation difficult. To forgive is to react to evil with kindness. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus summed up the meaning of forgiveness quite profoundly. He is superior to revenge, because it shows gentleness, while revenge reflects a wild nature. This wisdom highlights how forgiveness can transform lives, as it is founded on compassion and understanding from an enlightened spirit. When we think about revenge, we are simply reacting, letting others control our actions, being trapped in the situation, always as a victim. But by forgiving, you are freed and regain your power over yourself. 7. Face it head on. The seventh strategy we can use to solve problems without fighting is to face the problem directly. I like a phrase from Dr. Matt Mord, who says, the unconfronted enemy tends to grow stronger. Confronting someone means having a direct and objective conversation. You can start by saying, I noticed you've been doing this and that, and I don't think it's right. I didn't do anything to you and I want you to stop referring to me that way. That's confronting, it's not about physical violence, but about showing that you are aware and don't tolerate certain behaviors. Of course, every situation is unique. If it's your boss, for example, the approach needs to be different. Confronting is not synonymous with fighting, but rather knowing how to position yourself. If you don't show firmness, others can walk all over you. This doesn't mean you have to pick a fight, but when you show that you won't accept everything silently, most of the time the person gets the message and the situation doesn't turn into a fight. If you accept once, people will do it twice, three times, and so on. That's why it's important to be ready to stand your ground when necessary. 8. Focus on yourself. When we waste time thinking about revenge or dwelling on every situation, we end up negating the essential, focusing on ourselves. Think of it this way. Every minute of your life that you waste thinking about who hurt you, or how things could have happened differently, is one less minute of you. Sometimes, we think that those who offend us may regret it and change their minds, but deep down, this thought reveals that we are still waiting to be recognized by that person. Recognition first and foremost, has to come from us, no one will ever do this for you. Focusing on yourself means taking on this responsibility and stopping worrying about other people's opinions and recognition, especially those who dislike you. Stoics remind us that we have the power to choose how we react to any situation, which allows us to make conscious decisions aligned with our values. 9. Control is yours. You are the only one who has control over your emotions. When someone manages to affect you, it's because you allow it to happen. No one has the power to destroy your peace, take away your sleep, ruin your day, or belittle you. This control is all yours, no one can hurt you unless you allow it, because the control of your emotions is in your hands. It's hard to have to live with someone who wants to hurt us for no reason, but understand that these people, they can't stand to see someone with their own light. What truly shows who you are is what you feel and how you react to it. Therefore, it doesn't matter if you have many enemies, what really matters is how many people you don't consider enemies and don't feel anger towards. What matters is not what others think of you, but what you think of yourself. It doesn't matter how many try to hurt you, what counts is that you don't try to hurt anyone. If your life is not going well, it's not because of others, but because of you. What complicates your life is not how much others dislike you, but whether you harbor resentment towards them. It's not the bad wishes of others that matter, but how you feel and act towards them. You have the power to change things in your life, 
including how much you feel affected by your enemies. As Marcus Aurelius advises us in meditations, choose not to be harmed and you will not feel harmed. Do not feel harmed and you will not be. And if you made it this far, please accept my sincere gratitude. I hope the content has added value to your life and can help you along the way. I invite you to marathon our videos and subscribe to the Motinvesting Stoicism channel, which will undoubtedly add more to your routine, whether at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Moreover, I wish you a great day. Until next time.